<laughs> so first of all, on behalf of our class, um, I would like to thank all of the husbands, the significant others, the children, the parents, the grandparents, the family, all of you for your patience, your support, your encouragement, for listening to us when we questioned why in the world we thought going back to school was a good idea. <laughs> and we thought, well, why are we doing this? We have good jobs. We're nurses. We make good money. We can work three days a week and be full time. And we are so stressed out. Why are we doing this? <laughs> Thank you for... Uh, Oh, and for encouraging us when we, you know, our upcoming papers, um, when we miss dates, when we, uh, or functions, when we were simply mentally or emotionally absent. Thank you for picking up the slack, for watching the kids while we did homework, for not complaining that the house was messy, or asking for what was for dinner, and for on occasions doing your own laundry. <laughs> it is because of you and all of your sacrifices that we stand before you today. So thank you very, very much. there is an access to health care problem. The Affordable Care Act added 2.5 million Californians to our health care system. But unfortunately, there are not enough primary care physicians to care for them all. And nurse practitioners are one of those solutions to solving this problem. And by supporting all of us, you are part of that solution. So thank you for that as well. Thank you to our professors for supporting us, for driving us to be better. I'm not ignoring you behind me. <laughs> um, for taking, for showing us how to take our nursing career seriously, for not taking ourselves too seriously, for being patient with us and not rolling your eyes, at least not in front of us, whenever we can get freaked out about a grade, an exam, or the CPX. Thank you to my classmates. You are an amazing group of women with so many strengths and talents. I admire each one of you for who you are. You are some of the smartest nurses I know, and that's truly honest. With the exception, of course, our amazing professors, but um, you are an amazing group. You have challenged me to try harder, to learn more, to be better. As iron sharpens iron, you are as one person sharpens another. You are a difficult group to keep up with, but I'm glad that I had this journey to go on with, it, with you. It is said that war is one of the greatest stressors anyone can endure. Yet it also leads to incredible acts of heroism, sacrifice for one another, and deep human friendships. Yet in my opinion, in the hierarchy of stressors, I think nursing school falls in the top five. <laughs> and that goes for undergraduate as well. I remember that it's not been that long, but it's been long enough. But I think there should be a research project on stress and coping. What do you think, Dr. Holman? <laughs> so these past two years were hard. And think about the number of times we thought about quitting. But fortunately, we all hit that wall at different times. And so we were able to encourage each other, to pick one each other up, and to keep going when we needed it. We endured the battle, and we have been victorious. We've gotten to know a lot about each other. In some cases, personal things about our own health, or things about our family lives. And for example, many of you know that I'm Canadian. And you may have noticed that I often wear my roots shirts. The one with the beaver that Wendy often thinks is a little bit funny that I wear a shirt with a beaver on it. <laughs> but you see, Canadians have a reputation. We're known for being nice or loving our hockey teams or for saying A and simply for being proud to be Canadian. But I'm also proud to be Armenian. I have a crazy big Armenian family. <laughs> family dinners have more food than you can imagine, and a small wedding has like 300 guests. <laughs> Armenians also have a dark past, and we teach our children that history so that to never forget, and I am proud of my roots. Our roots are our history. Each one has a history. It's where we came from and can influence where we are going. So what about our roots in nursing? You may have seen the symbol of a lamp as a symbol of education. Many universities have it as it is in their seal or their emblem. It is the lamp of knowledge. Today, the, now, the lamp symbolizes the pursuit of wisdom someone that would be described as a scholar, which is often why it's used with education. But I think it's fitting that the lamp is also associated with someone else. <laughs> so believe it or not, this is actually from my undergraduate. I had to wear these on special occasions. 
So many credit the Lady of the Lamp, Florence Nightingale, as the founder of modern nursing. Nightingale set out for knowledge and wisdom and helped elevate the standards of care in medicine. So let's talk about our nurse, roots in nursing. In 1854, during the Crimean War of England and France against Russia, reports circulated of thousands of soldiers wounded in battle and dying under terrible conditions. Sir Sidney Herbert, the head of the War Department, petitioned Nightingale to take charge of that effort. Nightingale accepted, and with the help of her parents, she purchased supplies and uniforms for a contingent of 40 nurses. We have 43 undergraduates today, so just think, there's 40 of them. They boarded a ship and braved the cold and harsh storms for over a month. When they landed, they came to the wooden barracks of the military hospital. It was overrun by rats and cockroaches. The women were not prepared for the grisly sight of the soldiers laying on the icy ground, bloody bandages, and too sick to move. No beds or blankets, no fire for heat, and if a man's ration of half-cooked meat happened to consist of bone or gristle, well, that was his bad luck. And if he was too weak to feed himself, he went hungry. You see, what they had here was an access to care and resources problem. Not enough providers for those who truly needed it, and they were suffering because of it. Does that sound familiar? Nightingale met the officer in charge of the hospital. His welcoming words to this cavalry of nurses to come and save was, the army has never needed women, and we don't need them now. <laughs> well, after seeing the poor conditions and receiving this warm welcome, <laughs> it would be very easy for Nightingale to say, you know what, forget it, we're going home. They don't want us, we're leaving. But they didn't. They persisted. And Nightingale responded with, well, perhaps they would like women cooks. She offered, and she and her team set out scrubbing pots and pans made of soup, hot tea, and went to the hospital feeding the soldiers. The war continued, and the situation became worse. But the persistence of Nightingale and her team won the officers over. She wrote letters, she advocated, she lobbied, and in a manner that no female and no nurse had ever done before. She demanded action, and she got results. And they called this Nightingale Power. And the lamp? She'd use the lamp to light her way through the hospital hallways. She rarely slept, she was always making rounds. And as she walked, the men would see the flicker of the flame, and they would be comforted knowing that she was there. And may the comfort, may the care that you provide to your patients be like Nightingale and her lamp. May it comfort your patients to know that you are there for them. These are our roots. Today we still have an access to healthcare and resources problem. It's a war in a different form. Our resistance might sound something like, healthcare has never needed nurse practitioners and doesn't need them now. But we know the real answer to that. We are needed more than some are willing to admit, but we are moving in the right direction, one step at a time and winning them over. So I challenge you to continue writing letters, to advocate and demand action. Let's bring back Nightingale Power. But this time, we'll call it Danielle Power, <laughs> or Leslie Power, or Non Power or Joy Power, or Adeline Power, Jennifer Power. And <laughs> I'm going through all these names, I'm trying to make sure I'm not forgetting anybody. <laughs> Wendy Power, and Jessica Power, and Erica Power, or Katie Power, or Stephanie Power, or Pam Power, or Kelly Power, or Julie Power, or Cassie Power. Oh, no. Or no. more Power. <laughs> 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 